Uh, before we begin, as Richard has already mentioned, there are some housekeeping matters. Would everyone who's not taking part in the readings please mute yourselves now so that the background noise of the dog barking, the doorbell ringing and the, the phone going off the hook is kept to minimum. Uh, you can still join in the responses and you can sing as loud as you like silently. Uh, we hope to record this service so that it will be available on church websites. I'm Joan Thompson. I'm the link person for St. Michael and All Angels Scottish Episcopal Church in Ellensborough. And may I welcome all the other local churches and thank you for taking a part in this experiment. Our readers from St. Michael's today are all members of our Mother's Union branch. And our speaker is our Reverend, the Reverend Domin, who is also the Mother's Union chaplain. Hopefully, we will have no interruptions to the service, which I will now begin. Welcome to the 2021 World Day of Prayer, prepared by Christian women of the Republic of Vanuatu. We welcome our sisters and brothers around the world in the name of the Father, the Son, <coughs> the Holy Spirit. Vanuatu's culture, languages, traditional values and spirituality have their source in the population of mostly Melanesian and minorities of Polynesian origin. The black and white sandy beaches, coral reefs with coloured fish, lovely birds, lovely birds and nuts in the forest all make the islands a pristine environment. While they are also vulnerable to frequent tropical storms, earthquakes, cyclones, tsunamis and active volcanoes. In times gone by, each island and village had its own chief and style of governance, its own gods and language. Houses were thatched, constructed from leaves and trees using stone axes. Women and men would come together at the Faria, the village meeting house, to discuss major issues. Vanuatu is a small country in the South Pacific Ocean, a republic formed in 1980 after independence from a French and British condominium government. Today, Vanuatu proudly waves its flag and its coat of arms declares, in God we stand. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the earth. Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name, glorify your name, glorify your name in all the earth. Spirit, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name, glorify your name, glorify your name in all the earth. Let us hear the words in the first verses of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labour in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Happy is everyone who trusts the house builder, God. Let us be one of those. Amen. Mm. 
need to say that the mute needs to come off. Anthony, you need to unmute and start again, please. Now's the time to get together as a worldwide family. Let's forget the ways we are different. Let us work in unity. Let us celebrate Vanuatu as a nation proud and free. God build up and bless Vanuatu with all love and harmony. North to south, across the ocean, may the islands be as one. People praising God together, brothers, sisters standing strong. Let us celebrate Vanuatu as a nation with a song. God build up and bless Vanuatu. They let hope and joy belong. Prayer of Thanksgiving. Let us be thankful for the great things God has done. Holy, holy, holy God, creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. You are present in the history of your people, yesterday and today. Loving God, on whom Vanuatu stands, we adore you. For our fellowship with each other and with sisters and brothers around the world, gathered by World Day of Prayer, we thank you. For the great and wonderful things in our lives and nations, for the authority wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You grant us to care for all beautiful islands and countries. We thank you. For the fertile lands, for the fresh air, clean environment, beautiful sunshine, blue seas, and still waters of Vanuatu Islands. We thank you. For the sweet melody of the birds, the sound of land animals, the mystery of the fish in the sea and rivers, for waterfalls that rain down and serenely declare your greatness and power. We thank you. For children singing, laughing, shouting, for the prayers and songs of old and young, manifesting the joy of your love. Praises, glory and honour be to you alone forever. Life-giving God, receive our praise. Let us confess to God, who is faithful and just to forgive us. Our Father in heaven, your name is holy. We stand in your house of grace to confess that we have listened to your words, but have not acted on them. We do the things we should not do and leave undone the things we should do. We face adversities and challenges in our homes and nations. We build our homes thinking we are building on the words of Jesus Christ, but actually building on sand. We long to be changed. Restore us that we may do what is right and just. Creator God, we confess that we have polluted the environment and harmed the creatures of the sea by throwing rubbish into their habitats. We endanger marine life and ruin sustainable livelihoods. We know we can change. confess and regret our wrongdoing and commit ourselves fulfilling the, the mandate to be good stewards of your creation. God, hear our prayers. God is looking for a house to live in. Where is the house that you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? We come humbly before you and pray that you will grant us your spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Teach us to discern the truth. 
Lead and guide us that we may live in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to you. Humbly, we offer ourselves to be a house that you can dwell in. By the power of your word, transform our lives and our nations. Make us a household of justice and peace. Gracious God, accept our commitment. Christ be beside me. Christ be beside me. Christ be before me. Christ be behind me, King of my heart. Christ be within me. Christ be below me. Christ be above me, never depart. Christ on my right hand. Christ on my left hand. Christ all around me, shield in the strife. Christ in my sleeping. Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, light of my life. Christ be in all hearts, thinking about me. Christ be in all tongues, telling of me. Christ be the vision in eyes that see me, in ears that hear me, Christ ever be. Listening to the voices from Vanuatu. This is the story of Reto. She is the second child from a family of eight. Reto left school at 11, as her family could only afford continued education for her older brother and not Reto, as she was the second born and a girl. One day, hearing there was a sewing class for girls at a local centre, she applied and was accepted but was disheartened that her dad had no money to pay the fees, nor did she have her own money to finance her studies. With a strong desire to enhance her education, but no opportunities to do so in the formal school system, Reto turned her attention to the church as a place of learning. She joined the youth group, attended Bible studies, and later got involved with the women's ministry. With determination involved with this, with determination and faith, she found the ways to educate herself and acquire skills. She now makes items and sells them at the Mama's Market, where other women like her, with little education, provide for their families with their new skills. Blessed with three children, Rachel and her husband care for their God-given family, praising God for the blessings of their lives. Rachel thanks God for being the source of her strength and for helping her put into practice what she has learned. She has become strong and wise in the Lord. Someone's praying, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord, kumbaya. O oh Lord, Kumbaya. In Vanuatu, many children in the rural areas walk long distances to school. Some have to leave home and attend boarding school from a very young age. Education for all is not mandatory. The school system is either in French or English. Bislama is a learned language to overcome communication barriers in the towns, but in rural areas, they also have their own languages. Equal access to school for boys and girls is still a work in progress. Vanuatu's estimated population growth is one of the highest in the Pacific region. Malnutrition is a concern in both rural and urban areas. Although there's a strong tradition of growing organic food in gardens, the powdered milk and junk food industries are gaining access to babies and children. This is the story of Jack Linda. She comes from a rural village and from her youth, she had dreamt of working in tourism in Port Villa. She travelled there to get a job in hospitality, 
but she didn't have the training for her dream job. Jack Linda has no family in Port Villa, so she is living on the outskirts of the city, having no money for proper accommodation, food, or the fear to return to her village. She knows that this is not the plan God has for her, but she doesn't know what to do. She prays that the rural area of Vanuatu would be valued and young people would find the opportunities they search for in their own communities. She trusts that God will provide for young people to grow and contribute to the well-being of Vanuatu. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Oh, Lord. Kumbaya. With 75% of the population in rural areas with few employment options, young people have to migrate to the city. They go with minimal education and no trained skills to enable them to get work. High unemployment amongst young people creates a generation that sees no future, which is a great loss for the country. There is a need for policies and programs for the betterment of the rural area where the young people can stay in the community to be educated and to have jobs. Listening to the Word of God. Let us hear the Word of God according to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, where one of Jesus' parables is recorded. So then, anyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them is like a wise man who built their house on rock. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded over, and the wind blew hard against that house. But it did not fall because it was built on rock. But anyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them is like a foolish person who built their house on sand. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded over, and the wind blew hard against that house, and it fell. And what a terrible fall it was. So we've got a clear theme from our Mathean passage for this year's World Day of Prayer and build on a strong foundation. And as we've just been reading out voices from that Chiramu, the or certainly one theme uh, from those voices was about education. And that education matters. And back here in the UK, as we uh, hopefully put to bed lockdown and we see light at the end of the tunnel, um, education's been top of the agenda um, with, our, with our political leaders, hasn't it? Uh, get the kids back to school, almost a mantra. It reminds me of a former prime minister, um, uh, somebody, a uh, son of Glaswegian parents, a guy called Tony Blair. What did he say? Education, education, education. Um, certainly very high on on, on Tony's agenda because it had got him to where he was. And uh, frankly, we're all the same without that rock, um, without that solid foundation of education, it's very difficult to progress your life. Um, and maybe particularly here in Scotland, we, we take education very seriously indeed. So in the past, Scots were particularly known for their excellent education system. And Scots have gone around the world and done amazing things, particularly maybe as engineers and medics, we particularly associate those two skills, those two professions um, with our part of the world. Um, and education is, is the rock for that. And on our West Coast, in the, in the state sector, um, if you look at our so-called best schools, now that's a fairly precarious remark, but those at least which come top of the tables, the academic tables. If you jump over Glasgow and down, go down to the southwest corner in East Wren, in and around Newton Merns, you've got about three schools there which consistently top those tables. 
they are just producing the best results uh, year after year. And what you find is, I mean, for the 20 odd years I've been going to Newton Lands, um, you find they're just constantly building, um, building houses because people take so seriously their child's education. And if you go for the quality free education, get yourself into that part of the world, get your kids into those good schools, um, and hopefully all, well, all else will follow. Uh, more maybe from my part of the world originally, if you go down into that southeast corner um, of England, in the independent sector, there are probably sort of three schools which dominate the tables down there. And I highlight this because actually it's about women, and we used to be women's World Day of Prayer rather than just World Day of Prayer. Uh, well, obviously, it's to be more inclusive, but still, frankly, the majority are women, certainly looking at the screen in front of me. So with those three schools, well, the women dominate, and you will not be surprised to hear that. So the big Oxbridge machine, a place called Westminster School, they almost get about 50% of their pupils into Oxbridge. The sixth floor has men and boys and girls, so it's co-ed. Women dominate there. And the two other big players, Wickham Abbey and St Paul's Girls' School, both single-sex education, those girls, they just get amazing results year after year. Education is key, and actually it's the girls, it's the young women who, who, who lead on that. But when we read scripture, is this the actual rock? Is this the key foundation which we're supposed to be building upon. It's certainly important, made no two ways about that. The belief of most parents is you get your kids into good schools, they go to a Russell Group University, 24 of those here in the UK. Those big firms love the Russell Group universities, they pile in there for what we call milk rounds, get the students and the employees together, get good jobs, meet the so-called right people, and so on and so forth. What underpins all of that is education. So it certainly matters. But from a point of view of scripture, as a Christian, as people on a spiritual journey, is this the ultimate foundation? Well, as you imagine, I'm going to say, well, no, it isn't. Um, because actually uh, our foundation uh, is God. Um, that's our rock. That's where it all stems from. And that's far and more important than anything else, whether we go to the right school, the right universe, have the right career, marry the right person and so on. Actually, our foundation um, is, is Almighty God. So how do we, how do we tap into this? How do we... How do we access that? Well, I think essentially, if I think of all the retreats I've led over the years, it's in the main about knowing ourselves. That's our spiritual journey. Do we understand ourselves? Do we make what we call the longest road, the longest journey? Sometimes we call it the royal road, the journey which goes within us. Because within us, we find the divine. And that nurtures our spirituality. It, if you like, it sort of waters the garden. It gets the seeds going uh, and it helps us bear fruit. And in knowing ourselves, we come to know God because the divine is within us. So as we reflect on scripture, this superb few lines, it comes at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. So these three humdinger chapters from Matthew's Gospel, as you probably know, this was our first lectionary in the early church with Matthew's Gospel. So in other words, this is what would be read out from with the early church, with the churches around Asia Minor, the seven churches of Asia Minor and so on. They'd be drawing on Matthew's Gospel to get teachings from our Lord. And the teaching at the end of these three chapters, at the end of the sermon, just before, if you like, we come down the mountain, finishing this discourse with his disciples and the people around him. 
He's saying build on a solid foundation. Make it on rock, make it hard, not sand, which will crumble, and make it really, really solid. And maybe as we journey inwards, it also sends us outwards. It's, it's, a, it's almost a sort of Zen Cohen, really. As we go in, we're actually going out. And as we develop our spirituality, as we develop ourselves as human beings, we start to go out the way. And we think of islands in the South Pacific. We think of what we used to refer to as, if you like, the two thirds world. We think of people infinitely poorer than ourselves. We think of the impact that we have with our greenhouse gases and all of that as a highly developed, sophisticated society, the impact that has around the world. And we're aware of that, conscious of that. And as part of our Christian discipleship, we concern about, so about our environment, about being stewards of creation and so on. And this all stems from looking inwards, from being people of prayer, from developing our spirituality. So with these verses, these few verses from Matthew 7, they're very real, they're very practical. They're applicable then from, from our, 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 the mouth of our Lord, as they are today, here in 2021, um, in our town and surrounding area. These verses matter. So education, yes, it matters. Let's give that all we've got. Let's bring our kids up the best way we possibly can, as they should do in all parts of the world. Education is key. But for us as Christian people, our gospel is to proclaim the Lord our God, who reigns supremely over us. And actually, that is our foundation. As we point to the Father, with Christ at our side, with the spirit within us. May that be our foundation on this world day of prayer and forevermore. Amen. I found the light God's word inside my heart. I'll hide God's word inside my heart and learn each verse from memory. I'll hide God's word inside my heart until God's word is part of me. God's word will help me every day to know what's right from what is wrong. The more I read, the more I'll learn. God's word will make my loving strong. That's why I'll build my life upon the words of God so wise and true, to help me walk the ways of Christ and seek his light in all I do. Prayers for Vanuatu and the world. Let us be united in prayer with Vanuatu and the world. Everlasting God, the God in whom Vanuatu stands. Help us to stand for peace with our families and in our nations. We commit the leaders and people of Vanuatu into your ha wise hands. Help us stand against the forces of injustice and division present in our nations. We pray that in Vanuatu and everywhere, we can all live in unity and love and peace respecting and celebrating ethnic and cultural diversity. Bind us together in love, peace and joy. We ask for your protection for people living in places prone to cyclones, hurricanes, tsunamis and volcano, volcanoes and the damage they cause. We bring you our concerns for those suffering from addictions. Almighty God, protect our communities from disasters and suffering. Heal the souls of your people. Let them feel love. 
Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us build a house. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true, where all God's children dare to seek, to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and as symbol of God's grace. Here is one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine and wheat, a banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space as we share in Christ the feast that frees us. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach and live the word they've known. <clears throat> they've known. Here the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed as words within the word. Built of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace, let this house proclaim from floor to rafter. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. We pray for God's blessing. God's dwelling presence is in and with us. Let God guide you, lead you, restore you and heal your nation. Let God's will be done in your house as it is in heaven. Go and build your house wisely according to Jesus' words. Go with these blessings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. This is our strong foundation. We will follow Jesus, who is the way, the truth and the life. Amen. Um, Bethesda, the day you gave us. Okay, will I read it then, Richard? I think I've unmuted. Good, thank is you. Is it now? All right now? Yes, 
sorry. Okay. The day you gave us, Lord, has ended. The darkness falls at your behest. To you our morning hymns ascended. Your praise shall sanctify our rest. We thank you that your church unsleeping, while earth rolls onward into light, through all the world her watch is keeping, nor rest from worship day or night. As o'er each continent and island, the dawn leads on another day. The voice of prayer is never silent, nor dies the song of praise away. The sun that bids us rest is waking, your children neath the western sky, and hour by hour fresh lips are making your wondrous deeds resound on high. So be it, Lord, your throne shall never, like earth's proud empires, pass away. Your kingdom stands and grows forever, till all your creatures own your sway. Thank you all for taking part in this service. I hope you have enjoyed the experience and will go on your way feeling refreshed. I have enjoyed meeting all of you together like this. Uh, it's wonderful to see other people's faces for a change and to be able to communicate. Can I thank Richard and Nick for the technology part of this? I wouldn't know where to start. So we are very dependent on them helping us out with this one. Uh, Richard's got a few words to say about um, if you want or your church wants to give a donation to the World Day of Prayer. Thank you. As you're probably aware, we can't take a collection because we're not in person anywhere in our church building. But you can go to the World Day of Prayer website, World Day of Prayer Scotland website and donate online.